clearly Matt Orham's playing really well, so I think he definitely has a chance, but I think we've been saying that about Matt for nearly 15 years, and that's no slight to him. He's been right in that area of winning a big tournament, but I think pretty clearly at this point has to go on the list of the best player ever to not have that feather in his cap, so we'll see. Maybe this could be the one. James Proctor's been on a roll lately. I mean, he's a guy that's got a ton of game, very solid putter. Uh, I don't think he's ever won anything on this level before, but I mean, he's obviously a local winner, West Coast guy that's really starting to bring his tour game out. I mean, he was big time visible at Las Vegas. He was on league card, but I mean, his game is versatile. So there's no surprise to me that he is doing well here at Waco. If Vinny wins this event, who knows where it's going to lead for Vinny. So if we see him have that fast start back to back, I mean, this could be the best year that we've ever seen out of anybody. It's untapped potential and coming from a guy like Vinny, that's insane. I'm excited to see how that plays out. I don't think anyone at this point of the tournament can feel safe. Giving yourself a good lead with a great first round 12 under is a great start, but this tournament is, is a sprint. It's a sprint and an endurance race at the same time. So if Adam wants to hold on to his position, he's going to have to get a lot of birdies early in the front nine and finish the tournament off well and avoid the big numbers on 17-18. With eight people within two shots of the lead, all eight people could win this tournament. They're all proven winners on the tour. They all have their tour card and they're just waiting for their opportunity. And I believe that this course today is their opportunity. Hello and welcome to final round coverage from the 2023 Waco Annual Charity Open presented by Prodigy. We are here in Waco, Texas on the Disc Golf Pro Tour and you're watching Joe Mo's Pro with Nick Sexton, Jeremy Coling, and Paul Ewell. It's been a tight one, guys. It's been the closest event in Statmando and Elite Series history according to Statmando. What would you say, Paul, 24 players within two strokes of the lead? Is that right? Something like that? At one point in time. Yeah, at one point in time. I mean, it's just anyone's ball game. We've got a fantastic lead card. We also have a fantastic sale going on, jomaspro.com. Go check that out. We've got Sloma's discs at 50% off right now. You guys are enjoying the coverage. Help support. Go check that out. We also have 20% off of everything else Innova right now. And we're playing Waco, guys. I mean, this is just, this is famous Texas track. The wind is usually always a factor, and it's going to be a factor again today in this third and final round. And in typical Waco fashion, for some reason, this wind is not prevailing. It always switches. At one point, you're going to have a headwind on the hole one, and at one point, you're going to have a tailwind. And it just so happens that we are going to have tailwinds on hole one, which means that we're going to have tailwinds on the final holes as well important thing to think about as you're considering how this event's going to play out. Got Adam Hammes in the lead. James Proctor right there on his tail. He is putting together some solid putting numbers, 100% inside the circle. You got Calvin looming behind. It can't be a comfortable feeling. He's so stoic and poised under pressure. Nothing seems to get under his skin. And when he is putting the disc in the basket, man, he is frightening. And once again, we got Crawdaddy Matt Orm here in his favorite shirt. This guy is just always in the mix. I asked him recently, does he feel like he's at his best of all time at the age of 35? And he thinks that this is the best version of Matt Orm ever. Could be a scary thing this year. Yeah, hole one, we've seen it all week. Little par three, 291. This is a straight tail and a slight right to left, which makes the hyzer maybe a little bit tricky, but not when you're on the lead card. You probably got it figured out straight up the middle. We'll see a couple guys do that too. Pretty Adam wide gap. Hammes. Out of bounds left and right. Adam Hammes with the lead, and he has the T. Becomes the easiest hole on the course with the tailwind. Got to make sure you're starting off this course. Ready to get some birdies. This is going into that side hill. It looks like the flag is actually blowing a left to right, which actually is going to help the hyzer a bit. 
pretty sure that should be switching here in a second to that okay. to that tail one. I think that was just a little little gust. Proctor going with that high spike hyzer that looks way more good. of a stable. And look at that little scoot forward and roll. That was happening quite a bit today. And Calvin opting to play down the middle most of the week. It looks like he's lining that up again. Getting a little bit of turn, and that comes up well short. Easy to go long with that tailwind pushing, but a little bit of turn. That turn prevented Calvin from getting that extra 40, 50 feet that he was looking for. Matty O. Very overstable disc. That's yeah. going to work out. Yeah, I like I like the up-the-middle play with certain wind conditions, but I feel like with that tailwind, it's just a drop with that spike. Is there is Vinny from about 50. Oh, oh. solid effort. Adam, solid. That's his forte. You're not going to see him normally just park everything, even though when we watched him with his first national tour win, he led the whole card and parked, mm. which was... Yeah, and, and Masters Cup, but that's a huge deal with those fast greens out there. Or maybe it was... Uh, I don't remember which one it was. It might, Maple be, Hill. It might have been Maple Hill. But I mean, he—we all know he's known for his putting. Yeah, yeah. sure. And that's and that's it's where the glue. He, yeah, that's where he makes all of his his money right there at Circle's Edge. So birdies for the card minus Calvin. He'll be dropping a shot, and Adam holding on to that number one spot, twenty-one under par, leading the whole way, and he has proven that he knows how to win on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. This would be an incredible feat to go wire to wire with such a tight field the whole week. Moving on to hole two. Yeah, par four, 631 here with the OB on the right side. Plenty of trees in the fairway, but if you can hit that initial gap and just work the disc slightly left away from the OB, away from the river, set yourself up for kind of a dealer's choice, whatever you want to do to get in there to that elevated basket. Just a nice straight shot. This is going to play as one of the easiest holes with this big tail, and you just got to avoid that first one, and then you're you're essentially... Mm, oh, it sits down. <sighs> I there. thought he was past it, but yeah, that's the one to miss. Well, there's a risk of that going out of bounds. Sure. If that hits that a little mm -hmm. thinner, so he's uh, fortunate, I think, to stay in bounds there. But with the tail, when he's, I don't think that the birdie's even out of play necessarily. No, no, no definitely not. Wow. It's going to be a... Very long approach shot for Adam, but not Four, a long approach shot for James. 400-ish for, for Adam would be my guess. Maybe a little less even. But I think he's got that with his oh, little yeah. stomp forehand. Oh, yeah. No question. Matty Yo keeping that incredibly low, and this has got to get some edge. Does that stay in bounds? Okay, it does. Nice. This is the kind of day that somebody could potentially get themselves in that 80 foot range and could potentially drop a bomb. I mean, that's a bomb right there. That's yeah. a really big one. But I mean, for the putt, I played with Eric one year when he made a two and it was just, it looked so easy. And I'm wondering why have we not seen more of those on this hole? Adam is just over flex. I believe that's his Raptor. Didn't quite get the ink right. Surprised he didn't go with a higher speed disc if he was indeed at that 400 range. Couldn't have been if that was his choice, yeah. I think. Maybe more more in that 360 range, but either way, he overcooked it. He's going to be well outside there on that left side. That's a much longer approach than you'd like to have here on hole two, but Matteo does very well to keep that well inside the circle and even sets himself up for the tailwind putt. And I saw his stunt double there walking with him in case he has any tricky lies later. Those people are unaware that you are allowed one stunt double around. Well, don't tell them. I mean, most people are unaware. Yeah, it's kind Still. of the, part of the illusion of yeah. what makes us professionals. 
Perfect shot there. Calvin making easy work. And longest drive of the group, James Proctor. We'll get to his drive eventually. Gosh, that's phenomenal. That is a big, big tee shot. So we've got some close shots on the green. Matty, I believe, will be first here with about 18, well, I'll call it 15 feet for the birdie. He's got to be leading the world and fans rooting for him to finally get his first Pro Tour win. He is right here in the mix once again. He's just been knocking at the door for 17 years. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. The longevity and the consistency through all that time. And he's ranked seventh in the world right now yeah. with the U-Disc rankings, and he made the lead card at the World Championships in 2005. Five. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, 2005, he was top 10 in the world. Right, <laughs> right. And now he's... You know who's number one in 2005? Ken Climo. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty incredible to think yeah. about this guy who's been just a cross-generational talent. Pretty easy hole here. Par three. You just have to miss these little tiny planted trees right there, but this looks just fabulous. Yeah, this is the... Perfect shape and just a little bit long. Yeah, when you get on top of yeah, the tier, so it fast. really scoots. I mean, that was perfect, but with that tailwind, yeah. it doesn't want to stop. James will have a challenging putt coming up to keep those C1 stats perfect for the week. Matty O, this is just a dream shape for the way he throws a disc. And give him a little donk donk there. Awesome shot. Or thud thud. Is that what we landed on? Thud thud. I mean, that is so good right there. Perfect everything well let's watch it again anheuser out of the hand making that gap very big it's getting over stable hits the hillside Jeez. the very top of it which you just can't Proctor draw did anything. not do and that's why he's closer well, yeah kind of like hole five you kind of want to clip the very top of the hill before you crest yep. the very top and that's how you get the speed just perfect matteo does it to perfection needs to keep pushing forward yeah Splits him okay or split them that's another option that will take bullseye Nice shot from Calvin. And Adam up last with the only par, and he's going to be doing going to be doing the forehand. No, he's not. <laughs> he's, he didn't do. He'd, that will not do. That no. is a, a bit of a disappointing shot for him there. He's going to be well back. Pretty open from here to just swing the hyzer with his zone. That play is really nice because... You can control the speed a little bit better, I feel like, with the forehand at the top the whole way in its flight. But that gap certainly is a bit more technical. And oh boy. now he's going to have to work to avoid missing two putts in the circle as he is up again now from the edge of circle for par. And mm. just like that. That's so difficult on a windy day, just to get your mind around now an opposite wind condition after you just missed in one. Yeah. You know, man, just a difficult thing to do. Those elevated baskets near slopes on windy days, just a, an evil contraption. No doubt. I mean, to, to miss the putt and then have it roll back to you and you get to try the same thing, that's, that's one thing. But then, like you said, just to deal with a completely different wind. Well, it's it's so tough because it's not something you really practice. It's not like you put your basket on a picnic table and you're like, yeah, oh, yeah. it's the windiest day of the year. I'm going to go figure this out yeah. because you're just going to be chasing your putter around all the time. And so on the Pro Tour, we have five, six, seven, sometimes half the holes are elevated or yeah. on slopes. I think that's the thing of the future. I think the the, the, the kids who are watching this right now, Start practicing on piggy tables.
just at some point around, the if there's a chance to do it, I'd love for you to break down a little bit about how Matteo approaches the tee from the side of the tee box and yet gets his arm and the disc in line with the center of the fairway. I think it's pretty fascinating. You have a good form breakdown. I'm just putting you on the spot. Oh, thank you. Well, first, let's try this breakdown. Hole four, 441 foot par four. You just want to throw it as straight as you can with a little bit of heavy at the end. Get it to go left, right past this guardian tree, which is not in the middle, which I like that it's not in the middle. Yes. <laughs> that would be brutal. And then you just want to do this little move oh. right here. And Matty O <laughs> so shows you exactly what you need to do. Yeah, that was perfect. I love how he throws his hands up. Like, I didn't I didn't do it, officer. Like, he's just, like, innocent. <laughs> Wasn't me. Get out of there. That's two rounds in a uh. row for Calvin. The same dirty little roll. Adam inside. He was trying to get the flip up. Kicks to the right. Did you see that? He caught something that just so, ever so slightly drifted his shot to the left enough to catch the edge of that tree. I liked mm. Did you not see that? Just a little twist. Tiniest little thing. I think that he was going to beat that corner before that thing, I mean, moved him just a few inches. It was going to be tight. The twist. But now he's got to go down to the knee and just hope that he can scramble. That's a really good out. My goodness. That is so good. Yeah. It gives him that option if he wants to get a little risque. And Calvin kind of pushed forward yeah. more than I thought. Yeah, not as bad of a break as he got early in round two because he really had to just pitch out. That shot was harder than he made it look. That's blind going around that corner. Fantastic. That's the one. That's the tree that just disrupts the best tee shots because then you're left with this one quarter speed approach and to have a tree right in the middle of that lane, it makes you make a very tough decision. Oh, a little bit too deep. I like the run though. Perfect height. Oh no. Not all the way in the water. All the way in the water. Yeah, I don't think so. Wow. Okay. I thought for sure it was going water when mm -hmm. I saw the way it bounced up. But I, I thought for sure. sure it was going in. Yeah. Initially, yes. Dang, the putt's just not falling for our lead group, but Matteo is. I've never seen him crumble to the ground like that before. That was. My knees could not do that. Here we go with Adam's comebacker. Eh, okay. He's had a slow start. I don't like that. Because right now, as we sit, hole four, there's 16 people yeah. tied. These aren't. For second place. You just, One back. You can't. You cannot miss hole two and start to feel comfortable. Yeah. And, and, and then to compound it with a miss on three. I think that's why he went for that very aggressive bid from 60 feet here on four, but didn't have to pay the price of the bogey. But, I mean, he's kind of paying the price right now by not securing a little bit of comfort. Oh, there might be 15 people that he lost at least at this point, two strokes. So is What you just said is a, is made up or real? Real. 16 people were tied? 16 people were tied for second place at one point in time, one stroke back of the lead. My goodness. I counted it, and I took a straight shot. Well, Calvin Heinberg is now in the familiar position that he has put himself in so often lately. He is in first place, at least on our lead card. And these are the guys who have the most holes left. So we'll go ahead and say Calvin's in first. Yeah, hole five, par three, 264, straight up the hill, miss these guardians. Right and left come into play a lot here because you got to keep it low. You got to keep it low. And so you want to really penetrate the fairway. And I and think. Oh, sorry. No, I think you, on yeah. this one. Oh, come on. Ooh, look how much what the a flag shot. blows up here. Because this is out kind of near the, the edge. field. Yeah, sure. And down here at the tee, you don't really feel anything. But I find it unnerving to when you're throwing in yeah. a place where you don't feel any wind. But you can clearly see the flag kind of whipping around up there. It What's just, it going to do? It just makes you second guess. We're going to take one more look at this Matt Oram shot. 
and just a little tiny twizzle doesn't really affect anything that's going to be a bullseye back-to-back -back quality throws here from our lead card to see if Adam can get things going in the under direction this is looking pretty solid that could have gone in yes unfortunate little roll back yeah edge of circle putt and James back to back three putts putting for birdie turned into bogey on consecutive holes and he follows that up with a pretty good drive that didn't for some reason didn't get to the top of the hill but he's still going to be well inside the circle I believe and I think I think that was mm -hmm. a good putt I think that win just kept the disc flat and it wasn't able to get on that hyzer that's tough when it's wow. windy because it's hard to take that miss and really have any confidence with that. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's a complete downer because I would say if I was Adam, that's where I was aiming. Sure. You know, maybe sure. just a little wobble kept it out to the right. And it's, you know, you do see the flag moving, but it's, it doesn't feel like, I, I know what you're saying, Nate, because it's, you see that little hole there where you can see the cars back there, and, and that's the one place where the wind's, wind's really coming through. But unless you come out here in Waco, you don't really understand how well guarded you are from the wind in these woods. It is so thick when you get in the rough, and it really protects you from the wind. So where Adam was standing, he might not have even felt that wind, so it's hard to trust how much it might move. Speaking of movement, Matt Orham now jumps Adam Hammes. He is at 22. And with Calvin's four consecutive birdies, we can go ahead and say he's off to a hot start after missing hole one. Hole six, par three, 267, straight ahead through this gap and then down to the right, down the hill. You gotta get your drive extended enough. I think forehand is the most common play. Get around these last two trees and take your skip down the hill. Backhand turnover, of course, also an option here. Calvin opting for the two finger flick and gets a mm. way ish with it. That's gonna be a a putt. Here's Matteo. Can he make the correction? That looks great. A little bit straighter. Kept it flatter for longer. And what an interesting bounce there. Deal. You'll take yeah, that. That was good because that can get into that little brushy area and make a very awkward 20, 25 footer. This is pretty stock shot for Adam, and it, he needs this right now, I feel. And mm. he's, I mean, he can get that, but that's. It was a good shot gone too. bad. You know, Perhaps, that, that was yeah. bar barely off. Here's Proctor. He needs to have a close one. Oh, and he's not going to get one. And that's going to be in C1, and not that C1 stats matter for anything, but I mean. They're just plummeting right now after being C1 perfect for the first two rounds. Oh, no. And I suppose he could still make it, but it doesn't look likely from back where Proctor's drive landed. Had him from about 65, oh, 70. Okay. Stealing one back, huge putt. Having to split the trees. I mean, just perfect. I don't think people understand or realize how hard it is to go from a standstill from 60 feet and and watch that follow through that he has. It's hard to keep your wrist and your arm that straight on release. Okay, James not going to lose any C1 percentage points there. Huge putt. That's the most difficult one that he's potentially faced in the last four holes. Maybe a little change in the the putting mojo the group right there i think we've we saw some kind of lackluster stuff for a little while but two fantastic ones there and right calvin had to make a nice one for the par sometimes that happens one guy makes it and then the, the basket all of a sudden looks a little yeah. bit bigger except for the last guy <laughs> <laughs> and i and i also just feel that you know you're going to get frustrated missing those putts and these guys are top professionals so eventually it's like i don't even care i'm firing this in there and sometimes that's all you need right to then find that rhythm again and find that confidence in that pop behind the putt so i think maybe these guys have turned that corner and now we we, we might be seeing some long bombs and just look at this leaderboard i mean take a double bogey and then just see your name drop it's just you have to have pedal to the metal as we approach 
The second easiest hole in the course, guys. This is a par four, only 429 feet. Very eagleable. This is one that you cannot surrender an unnecessary par. This is one you got to get out the gap, give yourself a chance, but you can certainly find a forehand flex shot down in this bowl, putting for the eagle too. I think most of these guys are going to elect to play with a stable mid range just to get out in the field though. Oh, pretty wide. Deal. Not over. And certainly, in, he's absolutely in birdie range still. You just can't kick right. So. so so as I was looking at scores before the lead card even teed off to give you guys a little perspective as Adam just stripes it down the middle, which he had to do right there. Yep. At one point, 34th was six strokes off the lead. Wow. And that's almost last cash. So think about being in last cash, six strokes off the lead of the tournament. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I feel like I can like easily remember a time when I got last cash and got beat by 35, but to Paul or something, you know, or Ricky in Texas at some point. Happens. Those days may be, may be gone. Yes. Maddie. Oh, look at him go through. Wow. What a shot. Maddie throw. First. Wow. Down, and he is officially on fire. Yeah. Six through seven coming up. But you knew he wasn't out of it. They just required a really good shot, and he delivered. Absolutely. I think the Parked. only problem could have been there is if he had hit the koozie. Yeah, sure. The rollaway always a little bit of a worry on this green. But that, that slope, if you can stay away from hitting anything basket-related, just kind of slide it up there. It should oh. settle. Unless you launch it over the entire thing, but uh, good, good little stop there. James is making easier. making things tough on himself right now. That is not a putt you'd like to save the birdie with. This is a cool little tool to have. With the good old 120 foot jumper. Yeah. Good shot here of what the player is kind of looking at. Oh no. Oh, good flag yes. stick. Yeah. That was gone. Those flags are the saving grace of the flat tops. And when you say, it's funny because you say, okay, you got a good break by hitting those trees. Sometimes it's actually a yeah. bad break yeah, because right. then you have to go for it. <laughs> sure. It's at that distance where you're like, okay, I mm -hmm. have to go for it. I'm in the circle. I cannot lay this up on the sure. easiest hole ever. And then you go for it, and then all of a sudden you take bogey, you know? Yeah, sometimes opportunity has a dark side. <laughs> You guys That's ready for some way. stats? Yes. We got three Eagles. We got a Zachary Nash, a Raven Newsom, and a two-time Eagle club in this tournament on hole seven, a Mr. Joel Freeman. Wow. The other guys, 110 and 60 for Zachary and Raven, respectively. Joel just decided to do it from C1 both times when he Eagled it this week. So... And Good it, on you. Yeah, and it took him to eight under par after seven holes. Yeah, phenomenal oh. start. So Brother. That, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Whoa. Hole eight, par three, 214 foot. Let's see, Maddie. Does he pull it through the fairway? He gets away with it. That's, yeah. that's going to be a circle's edge putt. He will be running that. Yeah. But again, opportunity, but scary from there. Adam with the zone. Going standstill. Coming in kind of hot. Wait, what was that? Kind of hot on the <laughs> oh, strike. The ace. Is that in the basket? Yes. Adam Hammes with the ace. Slow start. Whoa. No longer. We got to see this from the other side. Paul, why did you not tell me? Watch this. Let's go. Lead card ace Adam Hammes. Right back in it, baby. Let's go. Oh, say. yes. And if there is a way to get back in the tournament, I believe that that is it right there. Oh, my gosh. Any nerves you might have felt. Go uh, on. I mean, there's got to be a ton of different emotions, but Adam, great shot and good shot for Calvin to back that up. That is a difficult thing to do in the emotion. I mean, the whole league card is there. I mean, the whole, the gallery, I mean, it's just, what energy. And if you've watched any of the other rounds, you see how treacherous this little guy can be. Yeah. 
That's a huge stroke saver right there. Run after it, pull it out, get out of here. Two aces on this hole this week. Max in uh, first round, Max were getting egg, and now Adam Hammes. What a week this has been for him. Catching up with Brian Earhart. Such a good break, because if he misses that, he's gone. Oh, that's what I was sure. thinking. That thing was coming in so hot. Yeah, unlikely to birdie from where that was going. But maybe he wasn't going for birdie. Maybe he was eyeing up an ace. I mean, it's a short enough hole you legitimately can play for something like that. That is just clinical James Proctor putt. He has a way of not giving up his confidence, doesn't he? Yes. Has he? I mean, he hasn't had anything easy since hole two. <laughs> he just keeps leaving himself, though. Yeah, that's uh, what every single hole. He's been 30, nearly 30 feet. What is it? The darkness of opportunity is a stone cold it's killer? A cold mistress. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> when did you say Verbatim. that? Verbatim. Well, he just said it again. It's a famous quote I do. Matteo, good par save, honestly. He he could have got the James Proctor roll. That stood up and rolled right into that bush, and it stayed yeah. right where it was. Adam Hammes now back to tie for the lead just like that. Wow. He goes birdie, birdie, ace. Have you ever aced in first place before on lead card last round? Pro what a, what a probably, cool thing. Probably. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, I, I'm trying to think of the last time that may have even happened on coverage. We've seen a few aces, of course, in Jomas, but, I mean, that's pretty special. Well done. All nine, this is the insanely challenging par four that is made slightly easier by removing a very key tree early in the fairway. Doesn't mean that it's an, a birdie you're expecting to get, but it's one you love to see an opportunity, and you can only get that opportunity if you get your drive down into the bowl. Hold a little bit. Ace disc is back just like that. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm not missing I'm the fairway. I'm throwing this one again. <laughs> Hole 17, uh, USDGC, third round lead card. <clears throat> Might have been one. I was Were you in first place? No, oh, but yeah. neither was he. All right. Until after. <laughs> Calvin, I mean, that was so close to being that's this, exactly that's what hole. he wants. That's this hole is so close. And that is also so close, but I don't think they're going to have a decent enough angle to get really aggressive. Oh, boy. The thick rough plus the right Sit. angle just makes... <laughs> Brutal. It makes for lies that are, you know, five feet is all the difference on this hole. If you're not in the mm -hmm. right spot, you just can't access the angle. The rough is too thick. Whether you're long or short doesn't really matter. That's going to be tough, too. That's in that long area after that kick. From here, not a lot of hope to just reach the green. Just check it. Just check it up. Just get around the corner and just be fine with the par. Yeah. Because it's a great score in hole nine. And and conversely, Matty O outdrives the fairway, and he is left with essentially yeah. no real good option. And that is such a bummer because it is so... It feels so great when you get one past all those trees up at the top. You're like, oh, okay, I'm down the bowl. Yeah, it's a finicky line because mm. if, if you do throw something fast and you peer it, you can't stop it. Nothing to stop it. And it never recoils. It doesn't like hit the backside and roll back into play. It's It just holds it back there. That was a good throw there. Sorry, I, I didn't get to break down Matteo's form, Jerm. I totally It's blanked. fine, man. If you, if you find time... You know, it could be next tournament. He'll be back in lead card, I'm sure. He might be on the back nine here. Yeah, I'm thinking he's had a good chance to stick in the group through in, into the back nine. They don't re they don't shuffle him anymore, do they? No. No, it's just back in the day. But he probably got that shuffle. He played with Ken Climo. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Oh, oh, Proctor. He liked it out of his hand. He's doing the little hoppity hop. He wanted to see full flight as we all did. That was looking really good. That's a good putt. That's a good par. Bogey free front for Matty O. This is exactly what he needs to do, putting himself in the mix. Magic can happen on this back nine, and he could potentially take down his first ever Elite Series win. 
It'd be pretty amazing to see. I just want to see this leaderboard. Yeah, I mean, these guys like, could all be like what's... four strokes back. I no, don't even know four. right now. They, they could all be tied with yeah, a bunch sure. of people, no, but there's I'm no kidding. way. No one's running away. Yeah, that's no right. No way. The only way you can run away is if you run away the opposite yeah, direction. Yeah, you can run the wrong way. But there's a lot of guys waiting for you down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On our card, we got Calvin and Adam leading the way. 25 under, but where is the rest of the field? There they are. Kyle Klein wow. joins them at yep. 25. Two men at 24. Three at 23. I think five at 22. 14 players within three shots. So, so many players are still in the hunt, still pushing forward on this one. Incredible golf. What a tournament. I mean, this is what we dreamed yeah. of for a long time, to have this many players in contention with a shot at it. You got to love it. You certainly do. I mean, the, if you're within three shots, you got a chance. And uh, there's a lot of guys that are out there still holes to play. Come on back. you got to see how this thing finishes. Nine more holes to go at the Waco Annual Charity Open.